So just a quick forward, this grow was an absolute disaster. I had multiple plant failings and there were other factors that meant that I couldn't respond to pH changes within this system in a timely manner. However, the parts that I'm gonna be releasing to you work absolutely perfectly. So it's likely that you'll get a better result than I did. Let's see if I can slide in. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm going to be releasing a whole new lighting system for the modular tower hydroponic system, both the injection molded version and the 3D printable version, the 3D prints being on my Patreon and the injection molds being released as physical products on hydroland.com. So let me introduce you to the parts. Okay, so this is the modular 3D printable hydroponic system that I released a few months ago. And as you can see, it is working absolutely perfectly, just as the injection molds did. This is producing a really good result. Now, because I actually wanna set this up indoors and also restart the grow uh, with lights exclusively, I'm actually going to just move these plants over onto the injection molded. So I'm just gonna literally lift it off this system and plug it into the other. Lift it up like so. <laughs> so simple. <laughs> and drop it down onto the injection molded tower, like so. We can actually take this one inside so that we can set it up with the new parts that I've designed for this system to be run indoors. All right, so we've got our base and our tower sections already pretty much set up and printed, or you purchased them from the Hydroland store. So what we're doing from here is we're actually adding on our tower sections and then adding on an additional few things that I've designed and some parts that will allow you to have a lighting fixture over the top of this system indoors so that you can grow literally anywhere in the world at any time of the year. This is a top plate with four BSP, half inch BSP screw fittings on top. Now this won't fit into the existing top because it's designed for a separate part. I'm gonna try and make these two parts available on the Hydroland store for purchase if you wanna add this to an injection molded tower because this base, this disperser, will fit onto the injection molds. And that will just fit into each other like so. Now this gives us a place to mount the arms that are gonna hold our light fixtures. And for those arms, I couldn't really think of anything to 3D print that would allow you to adjustably maneuver the lights. So I used a part that Kegland made available to me, which is these. These are stainless steel. They're actually a pipe fitting but they are a bendable pipe fitting that is actually quite strong for the weight of it. It's a very lightweight part. And that's what I needed. I need something strong, bendable, and able to be manipulated in such a way that it would hold a light above uh, our hydroponic system. So these come in two lengths. This is the 40 centimeter length, and there is an 80 centimeter length as well. Now, these lengths are gonna depend on the style of light that you plan on mounting above the system, um, and how much area you wanna cover with the light. Now, just quickly, on print settings, this top lid, I would print at nothing less than 30% infill. These are structural parts and there's going to be weight hanging off them in a fashion that's counter to the print layers. So you want as much print in there as possible, essentially. You can step it all the way up to 100 if you like. Anything above 30 should be fine. 
If you are using these and you purchase them from the Hydroland website, please remember that the parts are 3D printed, not injection molded, and they are not what you're used to dealing with. So you have to be caref more careful with them. Um, so when you're bending the pipes, make sure you hold the pipe and bend it uh, so that you're not stressing the print. That being said, I haven't actually snapped any of these parts yet. I'm just super aware of them. So I'm gonna set this up. The way that we attach lights to these arms is using these. These are a light hold print. They are the same BSP thread so that we can adapt the end of our pipe to a fixture that we can essentially hold a light with. And these are also going to have to be printed at 100% infill because the layer lines run across uh, the print. So as you can see here, one printed at 15% infill, I have snapped it. Just be aware that stru structural printing, we require a higher infill. I'm working on a version of these now that hopefully I'll have ready by the end of the video that has the layer lines running along the print rather than across the print. Just let my mind figure that one out. As you can see, uh, we just attach our bar light to this holder with zip ties. Zip tie the cord. So all of these parts are all available on the Hydroland website, obviously. They're a standard fitting, half inch BSP, and you should be able to find them from most, you know, brew suppliers or food manufacturing companies because they're a clean in place sip fitting uh, that allows you to uh, essentially clean the inside of kegs and other containers. Now, to do with these lights, because I know I'm gonna get the question in the comments, what lights are they? I do not recommend buying these lights. They have a good output, but they are electrically unsafe. So I cannot recommend these lights at all. I'm gonna show you what they are purely for the fact that I don't think that you should buy them. So if you stumble across them, I would avoid them. These are a Monios T8, T8 LED grow light. And the reason that they are electrically unsafe is that at the end, that is an exposed pin and if anyone puts their finger into these pinholes, they're gonna get a full 240 volt shock from the light. Now that's really scary. I probably shouldn't be using them, but these are the ones I have available to me right now. I'm gonna be super careful around them. I'm gonna tape up the ends, but yeah, just be aware, like when you're buying this stuff from Amazon, I think these came from Amazon, they were really cheap, but they're not Australian standard, which is actually quite, concerning that you can get them um, through Amazon. <laughs> All right, so there, <laughs> there is the top of our tower and it's actually quite stable. Uh, that's gonna work really well, I think. I'm just gonna set it up here in this little corner of the studio next to my keg fridge. <laughs> so these are just injection molded parts, uh, which will work fine with the 3D printed parts. <sighs> Look at that, that's worked really well. I wonder if the shorter ones will work better. I'm just gonna undo one of these and try. I reckon the shorter one will be absolutely fine. Look, I dare say the short ones are the way to go. I'm gonna leave it up to you. Um, the longer ones are gonna give you more range of movement. It's just gonna mean that the lights are a little bit bouncier. You can see here, I'm gonna do the short ones. Um, I'm changing these all over the short ones, uh, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Both will work fine. Um, and I'll let you know if the short ones become inconvenient due to lack of movement, I guess. And there it is. That is the lighting system physically set up. Now we've got to wire it up. So uh, the way that these lights work, and I wish that they worked better, is that they actually daisy chain uh, from one to the next. So I'm just gonna run wire along and then I'll just have a wire come down off and into the power. Each lighting system will obviously be different, but this is what I'm working with. As I said, probably don't recommend these lights, but now on the topic of electrical safety, 
if you are using anything that's from overseas and it has an earth like this pin. Make sure that your adapter is also an earthable, has an earthable pin because some adapters will accept an earth pin but do not have an earth pin. I've dealt with so many of these sent to me from American companies that it's not funny and I have to swap them out for ones that I have that have earth pins so that the whole device is earth, which is just ridiculous. So I know rambling on about electrical safety while I'm using an electrically unsafe item, but just be aware that these items exist. So I'm just wiring this into the base of the one closest to the power point. And then I just daisy chain uh, from there. So once these are all wired up, they won't be unsafe except for the one exposed element at the end. So as you can see, we run from the electrical cord up to the light, the light daisy chains and winds around our fixtures and then daisy chains to the next light, which has a loose cord. Uh, I'm not sure how to deal with this, but I just did a loose cord. Uh, straight up the light and then that daisy chains over the top of our other and down where it terminates. Now on the bottom of this termination, that is where our pins are going to be exposed. So I'm going to Cover that up. Just using some electrical tape, put that over the end of our light fixture, like so. Let's plug it in and turn it on. <laughs> so good. There's a switch down here that you can turn them on and off, but they're pretty much a single brightness. So it relies on you moving the lights to and from the plants. Okay, so here I have a PAR sensor. This is just a small spot on PAR sensor that they sent me out to play with. I actually love it, it's fantastic um, because it's, it's real, it's like pocket sized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this into one of our spaces and that's gonna give us an indication of the light reading that we're getting. And what we're looking to aim for is about, we're aiming for about 150 for lettuce uh, minimum. And what we're getting is about 140, uh, which is absolutely fine actually. It's slightly low, but it just means that we can bring this light in a little bit. So I actually think that these 40 centimeter bendy pipe things, bendy pipe things, that's the technical term for them, is appropriate because you're just gonna have a bunch of extra pipe hanging about there if you use uh, the, the longer ones. It's up to you though, of course. So we wanna get these lights like as far in as possible. So I'm just gonna adjust all these lights in and we'll take some more par readings. Now it may seem like you want them on an angle out so the light rains down like it would from the sky, but you want them almost evenly and vertical to the system, evenly spaced out from and vertically oriented to the system because the inverse square law dictates that the light intensity drops off to the square of the distance. Essentially, the, the further light travels from a light source, it drops by half every distance measurement. So that means that you lose a ton of light in the space between the light and the plant. And that's very important for indoor lighting because the distance is so short compared to something like the sun where like raising a plant outside won't make any difference because the distance from the light, from the light source, which is the sun is so vast. So what we're achieving in this space is a very reasonable 239 micromoles. So that's gonna be really good for growing lettuce and leafy greens and might even do some fruiting plants for the leafy part of their growth. So we're achieving a really fantastic micromole there. But like that's best case scenario, it's right next to the bloody light. So this one here, we've got about six, we've got about 65 micromole, but this sensor actually measures in this direction. So to be more accurate, if we put it here and measure it towards the light source, we get a more reasonable 145, 100, about almost 150. I'm gonna call it 150. So 
We've got a decent coverage because the lettuce will just grow out this way and that way for the, for the rows that aren't directly in front of the lights. And this is actually pretty good. Uh, this will work, I think, reasonably well. All right, so I'm now going to fill up the reservoir with nutrients, fill up the system with plants. This hydroponic system, I actually uh, made a bit of a mistake, as you can see by the state of some of these plants. I was filming and the pump turned on and I turned it off, put a bookmark in my head and I never actually turned it back on. So it went for a period of like five or six days without watering. So I'm just gonna remove some of the plants that I want to replace. And it was at this point that I actually decided to change the lighting out for a lighting system that I can recommend, which is the Migro Array. All right, we've got about 500 par here, 600 par. So it's gonna be unevenly spread, but I think this is gonna be better than what we had. And we're gonna learn from my own teachings and I'm gonna put a fan on this too. So what I'm doing here is I'm just filling this up and I'm gonna use my hydroponic nutrient solution hack. This is just a 30 millimeter pourer. And what it does is it measures exactly out how much pH up I need for uh, 10 liters of water. So I'll do two, cause there's gonna be 20 liters of water in here. There we go. I'm gonna do the same for my diamond white. and my calcium nitrate. I'm actually gonna drop uh, this Blue Lab uh, pH and EC tester in here, uh, which is going to allow me to monitor the system. We've got an EC of 1.8 in the res. We've got a pH of 6.2. I've actually got a reservoir here, which is uh, going to be our back up because the last one actually ran dry as well as the pump being not functional. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at my job, I know. I'm gonna put this pump in, connect it up to our lid like so. Now, on top. We can turn on our pump. Ow, sat on my finger, oh. And this is the result. <laughs> this has been an absolute train wreck of a video. All four of my time-lapse cameras completely failed, so I don't even have any time-lapse footage to show you. But as you can see here, all the plants are suffering from a pH problem, uh, which has caused a nutrient deficiency. So the pH is currently at 4.4, which is just not acceptable at all, uh, which has caused some of the nutrients will precipitate out of solution and not be available to the plants, causing this nutrient deficiency in the leaves, which is presenting as a ghosting, like a whiting of the leaves. Uh, the lights are working absolutely perfectly. This is the Migro Array. I switched out the Monios T8 for the Migro, and these lights have performed very well. They've produced a bunch of leaf matter, which would have been even more pronounced had there not been a nutrient deficiency caused by a pH swing, which I was unable to fix because I was away uh, for reasons that are probably obvious. The lighting solution, the lighting holder has worked perfectly fine and will be available on the Hydroland website as well as on my Patreon as soon as this video is up. Now, I think that these lighting fixtures will be appropriate for a wide range of lights. However, if you have a specific request for a light design, let me know and I will adapt these fixtures to the best of my ability to the widest array of lights that I possibly can. So I actually apologize for the break in regular videos. I'm gonna do my best to keep the videos coming. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this absolute train wreck. Happy hydroponicking, and I will see you next time on Who Chose.